Welcome everyone to Connecting Amplify Reading with CKLA. We're going to give people a moment to log in and we'll get started. Thanks for coming today. And we hope you're all having a great day depending on where you're at, where you are, I should say. We have a jam-packed presentation for you today. So grab, I don't know if you need caffeine at this time of day or a sandwich or something, some popcorn. We're excited to be here with you. You know, Karen, I love that we have, C you, ha you are repping CKLA behind you and I am representing Amplify Reading behind me. I love That's it. A great so comment. appropriate. Yes, so appropriate. And I think mine's backwards, so I apologize, but I've got to get that fixed. And we can share these. I know that that's something that, as people are in the remote learning world, that's something fun for kids who are using, especially Amplify Reading with those fun curiosos behind you. All right, should we get, thanks for joining. I see Kathleen has signed in. Thanks for sharing in the chat. Um, Megan, why don't we um, get started if that's good with you and we'll just do some housekeeping to get started. Welcome everyone to Connecting Amplify Reading with CKLA. We'll start, the webinar is being recorded. You're going to get a copy of it. And so um, keep, know that's coming. If you're having any difficulties, let us know in that Q&A panel. There's a Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen. Um, we also try to recommend going back to Zoom and starting over. That might solve the problem. We're going to answer questions at the end today, but we will uh, try to answer some throughout as they come in. So use that Q&A panel. Uh, we will save some time at the end, but we'll try to get them answered within too. So we'll start off by introducing ourselves. So my name is Megan Mobear. I am actually a former elementary teacher from Louisiana. Uh, the majority of my time in the classroom was spent with K-2 students, the foundational years that are extremely impactful on students' reading success in later years. Um, it was actually through my experience with teaching reading that led me to learning about the science of reading and gave me the opportunity to work with educators from different parts of the country who, like myself, are putting the science of reading into action through utilizing Amplify's core curriculum, which is CKLA. And I'm Karen Venditti, and I live right outside Chicago. I worked in elementary, first grade reading recovery, middle school ELA. But for the past six years, I've been, had the pleasure of working with teachers like Megan, who taught CKLA, but seeing those people in action in the field, utilizing the resources, and I just, it's been phenomenal. So um, that's my background, and we're excited to have you here today. Absolutely. So we love sharing our passion about the science of reading and, and the wonderful products that Amplify has to support you in making sure you put the science of reading into action um, in your classroom. So now that we've introduced ourselves, we want to know more about you. Some of you have already done this. Uh, you've already um, in the chat put your, where you're from and what your role is. And so as you're pouring in, if you just got here, please do so. We want to know who's joining us. Um, it looks like we have people from all over Arizona, Colorado. I love it. We've got someone whose son Next. is getting into first grade at CKLA school. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Oh my goodness. You're going to love his teacher. You're going to think she's the smartest teacher ever because of what he's learning at school through using. Or he, it might be a he. Or he. Yeah, you're right. You are so <laughs> right. So now that we've done that, let's, um, we'll actually begin we're going to start today by introducing everyone to Amplify's Early Literacy Suite. Then we'll dive into um, our core literacy program, CKLA, or Core Knowledge Language Arts. From there, we'll look at how Amplify Reading can provide um, effortless, differentiated, independent uh, support for all students. And then we'll actually look at how Amplify is committed to providing support for educators, no matter what the learning environment may be. And at the end and throughout, we want to hear from you. So we'll open up the floor for questions and 
feedback and give you directions for next steps. So we'll start here. Um, a strong literacy program, when thinking about the plan that you have in place is uh, for, for literacy in your school or district, it's not just about a reading program or an assessment tool. A strong literacy program actually is gonna bring to curriculum instruction, practice, differentiation, and assessments that measure where students are, where they need to go, and what's really needed to promote their ongoing reading success. Amplify has brought these key components together in an early literacy suite to ensure that you have what you need to meet all of these necessary elements based in the science of reading. That's right, Megan. Amplify's literacy suite includes these three components, all grounded in the science of reading. And so you can see in the middle cell there, we've got CKLA. That's our core curriculum, right? It focuses on the foundational early literacy skills like decoding and encoding, uh, building background knowledge through content rich readalize and we're going to talk all about that today as well as on the left hand side we've got m class and those are our assessments uh, they feature a universal screening benchmark uh, measures as well as progress monitoring dyslexia screening tools k to six and then on the right here which we're also going to talk about today is our student-led adaptive digital practice program. It's focused on those foundational skills, but it has an e-reader application to maximize those skills as well. So Karen, going back to um, a strong literacy program, it's not just about assessment or core instruction. In fact, the power or, or supplemental practice, it's the power of them or the powers in them aligning to one another. So today our focus is actually gonna be on Amplify Reading and how it directly connects to the skills continuum and knowledge and vocabulary that students will encounter in their core curriculum or CKLA. Um, and then we'll look, you know, after students are seamlessly placed on their own individualized learning paths, they'll continue building knowledge and vocabulary as well as perfecting their foundational skills. You know, and the great thing to know here is that both of these programs are grounded in the latest early literacy research. Great, so let's start with a quick overview of the core literacy uh, curriculum CKLA for anybody who's attending that may not be that familiar with it. So we wanna remind people <laughs> that we're eager to dive deeper at a later time uh, to learn even more about these programs and the solutions because we're just gonna scratch the surface. I feel like I always say that, we're just gonna scratch the surface. Yeah, we have a lot to cover, so we definitely are. So Megan, why don't you start with what we mean by that science of reading? Sure. So we'll start with the simple view of reading. This multiplication formula is Golf and Tumner's simple view of reading. You know, a number of years ago, these two detailed a really uncomplicated way to understand that complex combination of skills that results in our ability to read. Yeah, they called it the simple view of reading, which may sound kind of silly because we know that reading is not something that's simple to teach. But in order to become a proficient reader, people must be able to decode words on the page or simply convert written words into speech, which is identified as word recognition. But they also have to have the ability to understand that speech to make meaning of the words being read. And that's identified here as language comprehension. But the key thing to note is that they are both equally as important as seen in this equation to developing a proficient reader. So we'll use Scarborough's rope to break down how and when we should focus on developing both of these factors in the simple views equation. The reading rope really is the perfect visual to help us understand the ingredients of both language comprehension and word recognition. So we're gonna begin with that word recognition strand on the bottom. In order for kids to actually decode those words on a page, they have to be able to identify the sounds in spoken words. We're gonna con and connect those sounds to their symbolic representations and practice with reading those words in order for them to become familiar and automatic. But the blue strands on top identify the competencies students need to make meaning of the text. And so in order for this to happen, they have to have some background knowledge and vocabulary and understand the way that sentences are structured and how they connect to one another. Kids have to be able to infer meaning to really understand that gist of a text. And as students become more skilled in decoding, and have a foundation of background knowledge around all of those topics. With the vocabulary of these topics, they're really going to gain that ability to read. And it's what research has shown us for decades that teaching reading is not a natural process. It's one that needs to be explicitly taught, practiced, and really mastered. And so that's what CKLA does. 
Absolutely. And our own program structure was developed from this research. In fact, in, in K-2, we take a two-strand approach because of this. So CKLA develops word recognition in the foundational skill strand. It's the foundational skill strand really builds the nuts and bolts of early literacy through its explicit systematic approach to teaching phonological awareness and phonics. And this is really where students learn how to crack the code, which unlocks the way to reading. But the foundational, CKLA's foundational skill strand is not just phonics. This is where foundational writing, grammar, spelling, handwriting, vocabulary, and comprehension are taught. Um, in fact, we connect all of those foundational skills I just mentioned to the sound spellings that students are learning um, within CKLA. So we'll actually take a look at a general overview of CKLA's scope and sequence to understand how this is done systematically meaning we're going to teach the most simple foundational skills first and then build on those to teach more complex skills. So for CKLA users, you may know we use a sounds first approach. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, CKLA does use a sounds first approach. So before teaching sound spellings, we focus on manipulation of sounds. So CKLA's kindergarten strand is rooted in the most simple foundational skill, phonological awareness. And this is where that green strand word recognition begins. Students practice manipulating chunks of words to develop skills like syllabication um, and rhyming. And this is all done orally. As they begin to master these skills, CKLA instruction moves to the more complex phonological awareness skill, that being phonemic awareness. And this is where we actually, instead of working with chunks of words, we actually move down to the phoneme level and develop blending and segmenting in tandem through engaging kinesthetic motions and activities. Then we connect those sounds that students are learning in kindergarten to print. And so this is really where it turns into phonics. Um, and we teach the basic code or the most simple of those sound spellings. As students progress through first and second grade, we continue to build on their basic code knowledge and move to teaching the more advanced or more complex sound spellings. So in CKLA, we leave nothing to chance. We explicitly teach all 150 sound spellings for the 40, 44 sounds in the English language. And students have extensive practice opportunities with reading and writing words um, that contain those sounds so that by the end of second grade, they can unlock the code and go into third grade as skilled decoders. So as Megan's hit the bottom strand, the green word recognition strand, now we're gonna to move to the blue strands where that focus is on developing language comprehension so that students can make the meaning of the text they're gonna read. And so the that's other equally important component is that language comprehension or oral language development that you see on the top. Our K2 knowledge strand really develops students oral language by exposing kids to rich worldly background knowledge. It's a coherent focus for us and we're using complex text to build students vocabulary so that they can access a wide range of meaningful texts in their upper grades and into college and career. You may recognize this if you're a CKLA user. CKLA's knowledge sequence was intentionally designed to build knowledge and vocabulary both within and across grades. And you might be able to see some of those connections across. Students are gonna use their skills to explore knowledge domains related to science, social studies, literature, um, as seen through the eyes of many different groups. And so during pre-K to fifth grade, this is the opportunity for kids to build a rich and varied foundation about really worthwhile topics that they're gonna to need to understand more deeply as they move into middle school and high school. I would love for you, I know, you know, we'll get you a little involved here. I'd love for you to type in the chat, which domain topic might excite you as a look at your grade level, or for those of you already implementing CKLA, let's hear your favorite domain and why. We'd love to hear that. We'll, we'll continue to look at that as we move on. And so here's how the knowledge strand looks. Here's what it, how it works. Um, we start, we build, connecting that content through prior read-alouds. We talk about what's happened on, a, on, a, on our um, previous lessons. We set a purpose for listening every day. We want kids to, you know, if we're going to sit and read aloud to them, we want to make sure that they know what we're, we're the purpose is. We're going to 
ask lots of text dependent questions. There's going to be interactivity built in through think pair shares and four corners activities um, based on the text. You know, it always comes back to that evidence through the text. And we're going to make sure that we ask kids for that. Uh, the vocabulary that we're talking about, that tier two vocabulary is embedded within the read alouds, but we're also going to do activities like word work where we focus on some really um, great words that they, we want them to internalize. And it, lastly, it's all about an application of that content. We want to know, are they getting what we're sharing with them? And, and we want to know what they're getting from that. And so as these strands come together, and the students have transitioned into skilled decoders and they're more strategic in their reading. In grades three to five, that integrated strand provides instruction centered on relevant complex text. And those are going to continue to deepen students' vocabulary and background knowledge. And ultimately, their comprehension ability. While they're using these texts as a vehicle, we're going to do that to teach morphology, writing, and all of those language competencies that are so important. And so now in grades three to five, our kiddos are really excited to apply those foundational skills that they've mastered and continue to build on the new and unique topics because we're going to build on those. Remember, we said they build within and across grade levels. And so all of that work is to, will, will happen to support them as they continue to read related text to build knowledge and master that tier two vocabulary that we talked about and the application of that as we see in Amplify Reading in the e-reader and all of those vocabulary activities and applications. So now let's spend some time talking about our differentiated instruction and that practice component, aka Amplify Reading. Megan, take it away. So to let you guys kind of know what Amplify Reading is, it's a personalized, adaptive digital journey for students that extends the learning in CKLA in any learning environment. So it's student driven. Um, it's a skills practice program that's going to provide that differentiation, um, digital instruction in both foundational skills and comprehension strategies in an engaging, motivational way. And it really moves the needle forward on reading growth for all students um, while giving teachers insights and tools to more effectively lead their class. So as we heard earlier, Amplify Reading is built on the science of reading. Um, all students are learning based on an intentional scope and sequence that aligns with CKLA scope and sequence, both for below grade level and our advanced students. So this is helping all students achieve at their reading at, at their level. And this is really the ultimate goal of Amplify Reading. It's also going to provide teachers with meaningful insights and actionable data. And there's flexible implementation, especially what teachers need in times of uncertainty like this. And the high engagement ensures optimal use of students on students task on time. So before we take a deep dive in both the student and teacher experience and really look at the alignment um, between CKLA, it's important to learn about the two main, main driving factors of Amplify Reading's program design. So first, uh, we wanted to develop a program that was developmentally appropriate for students so that they're motivated to actually log on and play while they receive that practice and support that they need to become proficient readers. The second driving factor is we wanted to give students the skills practice they need that's based on the latest research and proven to work and moreover giving older students foundational skills practice alongside grade level materials with built in scaffolds. But Megan, something that we won't explore today again we're just scratching the surface and attendees can see on our continuum here is our grade six to eight program and that AR world advances to this dystopian universe where the program changes a bit to involve the readers in more of a realm that close reading is the focus and kids master skills for deeper text analysis. But today we're just going to focus on uh, grades K to five. And here you can see the specific skill coverage across those grade levels. So everybody, attendees, we'd love you to just take a moment to review these. If you're a CKLA user already, these skills are also aligned to the CKLA skills progression. You have that scope and sequence. And so this is something we can share um, within the um, Amplify Reading Guide as well as our CKLA materials. So let's go back to age appropriate and adaptive thinking about a fourth grader who needs practice with first grade reading skills. So they're gonna enter their um, world of adventure 
uh, that you saw on that previous slide for fourth and fifth grade. Um, and they're going to actually encounter quests and the quests are going to drive the narrative for their adaptive personalized skills practice, which takes place at the subskill level. So all kids will be in their great appropriate world. Um, but as you can see on the bottom portion of the slide, each child is given a different game path based on his or her individual needs. So going back to that fourth grader, um, you know, they enter the world of adventure, um, sitting next to a grade level peer who's on level or above level, both in the same world. One's working on close reading, the on level or above grade level student, while the below level student may be working on phonological awareness, but still encountering those same narratives. So it's grade based, but it's also needs based as well. Students are actually placed into Amplify Reading several different ways. So if you're an Amplify M class user, your Dibbles 8 beginning of year data places students in seamlessly. If you use one of the other universal screeners, um, that third party data will actually place students on their journey. But for districts who don't utilize a universal literacy screener, Amplify Reading has its very own built-in placement tool to ensure students get the content they need and help jumpstart learning right when they start. Um, so this placement tool allows those without assessment data to place students in the program or really allows for flexibility in a remote learning environment. Um, it's this internal placement tool is actually built right into the Amplify Reading narrative as the first quest students complete as they embark on their adventure. So now that you see how easy it is to get uh, students placed on their um, their learning path. Uh, let's let's actually look at how they log in. So before we do that, we need to look. Uh, you know, time is precious, and so for CKLA students, they're actually only one click away from logging into Amplify Reading. So on CKLA's digital student hub, um, the students will actually click on their customizable companion, um, the Curioso, and they're brought directly to Amplify Reading. So you see right here, and then as they're brought to Amplify Reading, they can log in using a QR code, which makes it really easy for younger students, or a, a simple sign-on, uh, single sign-on credentials that you may already use for other programs. So now that we understand that CKLA provides science-based core literacy instruction, and Amplify Reading provides that extended student-driven personalized uh, learning, we know how students are placed into their learning path. We know how they get logged in. We're actually gonna look at the science-based connections between CKLA and Amplify Reading now. So the science of reading tells us that our brains need to be rewired. It's to learn how to read. It's not automatic like learning how to speak. Um, we also know that these skills access different parts of the brain. So we have to teach comprehension strategies at the same time you're teaching foundational skills to build the brain muscle. And so CKLA does this with that two strand approach and that integrated approach um, on a daily basis and Amplify Reading does this as well. It actually has students practice both word recognition and language comprehension in a single quest to reinforce and extend the learning that's taking place in CKLA's core instruction. So earlier we looked at CKLA's explicit systematic approach to developing word recognition in the skill strand. And we went through that general overview of the scope and sequence. So we're actually going to go along this scope and sequence and we're excited to show you how Amplify Reading's games work alongside CKLA, uh, CKLA's skills instruction. So we will actually start with phonological awareness, the place where developing word recognition begins. It doesn't include letters. It only includes manipulation of sounds and chunks of words. So in CKLA, phonological awareness activities um, include counting uh, or syllables and blending syllables. And this example that you see here is actually from kindergarten unit two, and it shows how to blend these syllables together. Um, students must first be able to distinguish and count the individual syllables and then blend them. In early instruction, students begin with compound words as they blend these two parts together. And in Amplify Reading, one of the games that reinforces the practice of segmenting and counting syllables is a game called All Aboard. So I'm actually going to show you guys All Aboard now. Um, I'm gonna click on here and I'm in the first grade world. So I'm gonna go into practice mode and I can see all of the um, sub skills that Amplify Reading um, has to offer right here. I'm gonna click on phonological awareness and all aboard. So you can see, I'll let you see how Alex is gonna do all of the onboarding for this. Help the train get to the station by counting syllables. 
words are made up of syllables. Place your hand under your chin. Say the word and count the number of times your chin goes down. Each time your chin goes down is one syllable. Count with me. Chalkboard. Chalk. Board. Chalkboard has two syllables. Dance. Dance has one syllable. Dinosaur. Die. No. Soar. Dinosaur has three syllables. Ready to try? Tap here to hear the word. So we'll listen Bookshelf. to the word. How many syllables are in this word? So using that Count with me. multi-sensory approach, um, you know, putting that syllables. hand under, under the chin. Tap um, this here space. I have this, this model, book Tap this space, shelf. then press go to move the train. And now I press go and the train Great moves forward. Job. So Time I'm for practicing the train to get moving. Um, combining or counting syllables here. Um, the next thing we'll look at is another phonological awareness game that um, actually extends rhyming development from CKLA's instruction, and it's called Zoom Boom. And so let me see here. Here is Zoom Boom. And in Zoom Boom, you'll see that it opens up with instructions in hip hop. Um, and students are gonna practice recognizing rhyming words by choosing the picture of a word that rhymes with the prompt. Now let's learn about rhymes. You'll get to practice quite a few times. Rhyming words have the same sounds at the end, like send, bend, lend, and friend. Can you make a rhyme? Let's see. Maybe you can do it better than me. Let's get started. Cat, bat, hat. They rhyme. Words that rhyme have the same ending sounds. Which word rhymes with? Dog, key, mice, frog. Frog, dog. They rhyme. Drag frog here. Frog, dog, frog. They rhyme. So Which word rhymes with? Gate. We see that students are actually um, receiving that, that rhyme with the prompt, or picture of the words that rhyme with the prompt and they have to drag and drop there. So lots of fun engagement there. I love the instruction, um, the music to that. Um, but another thing we'll, or the next thing we'll move to, moving from phonological awareness um, is, is early decoding. And so in CKLA, we do use that sounds first approach where when we introduce a sound, we really focus on articulation of that sound. In fact, in our student, in our um, sound library, um, this interactive video is actually showing us focusing on um, that sound and the articulation that that child is using in that sound. And Picky Goblins actually reinforces and uses the same practice. So we'll look at Picky Goblins. Megan, I just want to share as you're showing the Picky These Goblins. These toasts have letters on them. Yeah. This letter makes the sound. Just how important CKLA, for those people using the program, they know how important articulation is and these visuals and the, and the images and the game really support Letter them. makes the sound. Absolutely. Ah. And you can see this mouth moving, doing like the same thing. Apple. Now you say it. So still using that sounds first approach. Um, this letter makes the sound. We see these mnemonic like aids here tie. as students progress through the now levels. The mnemonic it. aids will be removed. Um, so this letter makes the sound. Uh, students are uh, observing like the positions of the octopus. lips, teeth, and tongue for each sound. Now you I say. love this. This mouth will actually act as a support here in a second. So here's our piggy goblin, and These he's hungry. These goblins are picky eaters. Feed the goblin the toast that makes the sound it says. Tap the mouth icon to see how the sound is made. So that's actually where it's going to drop down and give me that support Looks like focusing the goblin on articulation wants. again. Drag this toast to the goblin. So here, not focusing on letter uh, names, just focusing on the sound and matching that symbolic representation. Um, something that give CKLA the goblins does as the well. Toast they want. So now we'll actually look at 
uh, word city, which for those of you who are CKLA teachers, you'll know, you'll recognize this activity here on the left. Uh, this is chaining or students are using large letter chaining cards to turn the word man into main. So we're manipulating individual phonemes to build and read words. The teacher is gonna say alakazam here and students actually have this engaging tactile way to uh, build and manipulate phonemes. And Word City provides the same um, thing for students. And so as I log into Word City, you'll see how this practice uh, is actually extended Drag here. the letter tile to make the word at. So I'm manipulating, I'm changing am to at. Change at to mat. And so I'm adding this phoneme here. Use this tile to remove letters from the word. Change mat to at. And now I'm deleting a sound. Just like in chaining. And I'm rewarded for my efforts as I build this, this tower of words. So that was Word City, and we'll actually move to that advanced decoding piece here. Um, and so we know that once students master those early decoding skills, it's time to move to uh, more complex pieces of code and reading activities. So um, you'll see that instruction here on the left with CKLA, um, but we'll actually talk about another game called Curioso Crossing. And for the sake of time, um, I'm just gonna kind of give you guys an overview of, of Curioso Crossing. So in Curioso Crossing, students actually gain word reading accuracy um, and develop overall automaticity um, and fluency. And so students identify the correct spoken word while helping the Curioso cross the landscape. And after building decoding accuracy, students actually participate in a game against the clock to help the Curioso cross safely. So students who need help during this game will actually re receive additional instruction in blending sounds and word parts led by Alex. Um, the game really helps students practice decoding of uh, regular and irregularly spelled words as well as um, you know, these, these more complex sound spellings. So we see those double consonants here. Megan, that was fantastic. I loved seeing all the games. So thank you for sharing that. Hey, Karen, I have to let you know, that was just a few. <laughs> there are right. so many more that we could show. Exactly. And so again, we're just scratching the surface here. Uh, so now we want to move on to from the skills practice and amplify reading to show that those opportunities to extend the CKLA knowledge and vocabulary building that I talked about a little bit ago to develop language comprehension. So we incorporated CKLA knowledge topics into Amplifier's readings game, the world, so that it's a coherent experience for kids. And much of that game world ties back to various topics in CKLA. We've integrated key vocabulary from the CKLA read aloud stories that I talked about throughout the narrative of that, of that, of that world that Megan mentioned to provide kids with additional exposure using both nonfiction and fiction texts. And then students are gonna get a chance to apply their learned reading skills and the vocabulary as they encounter engaging texts within that e-reader where they're gonna discover activities embedded throughout which are gonna monitor their comprehension. I'm gonna talk about that. A great example of this happens in grade one where they learn about early American civilizations and then astronomy and they're going to read the legend lifting up the sky and they're reminded of a constellation study which they talked about in the domain and they can connect it to other legends that they've studied. Uh, and students are going to get lots of opportunities like this to connect CKLA within the e-reader. And you're going to see a picture of that in a minute. And they're also going to continue practicing those CKLA tier two vocabulary words that we talked about as part of that personalized path when they're working in the vocabulist and other applications. The CKLA tier two vocab words and the meanings are taught and practiced in the program. So they're going to get, you know, kind of a double whammy there with various games and that application of the vocabulist. And so for example, in our book world, that the, the young immigrants that we study, um, where kids are, or where um, young immigrants are becoming citizens, we use the actual definition of the word citizen from CKLA and from that instruction. 
And then kids, and this is the story I was talking about with that e-reader, students are going to get a chance to apply their learned reading skills and the vocabulary that they've encountered with those texts and the e-reader. And they're going to discover embedded activities that are also going to monitor their comprehension. And again, um, this is where they see that uh, example of from grade one early American civilizations and they're going to see that e-reader where the Snohomish legend is something that's going to come back to them that constellation study you see on the right there they're going to see that from the from the Mayan um, introduction in early uh, American civilizations and so as we continue to talk about comprehension we want to make sure to dig into our the research right because it's guided kind of a unique approach for us that really focuses on developing comprehension processes both during and after reading. And so we partnered with researchers to understand, you know, what's happening in a very common classroom situation. You know, what I want you to think about your classroom right now. I'm, you may be um, on summer vacation, but think back to a time, you know, when you've read a story to kids like that one on the left there and you can read it really quickly. Um, or your students read it themselves and think about the student who's read that text fluently then you've asked a comprehension question like you know what's the main idea that's a common one and the student says something totally off the wall and you know you're probably caught off guard because to you <laughs> you know as a skilled reader the answer seems super obvious you are undoubtedly thinking you know what is not connecting here well there's actually a lot going on during the process of reading that, you know, as fluent readers, we don't even think about it. These processes allow us to visualize what we're reading. It's that mental model. And you can see, you know, the, there's a lot going on here. And what helps us to answer those typical comprehension questions? You know, if I ask you that example on the right there, why did Carla get wet? First, you know, look at that. You've got a couple of characters here when you're reading that little paragraph. Um, you've got the pronoun she, you also have to know what an umbrella is, what it's used for. That sentence never says it's raining, so an effective reader actually makes an inference from that missing information. This mental model happens instinctively for us as skilled readers and automatically. Um, it doesn't always happen for our kids who, who are struggling. So let's dig deeper and look at this really simple sentence here because a fluent reader would know that it is very simple. If I were to ask you, why did Carla get wet on the walk to school? You're gonna probably say, because it was raining or she forgot her umbrella. You know, how do you know that? Well, there's two things here that tell you that. There's an inference, it was raining, and there's a connective, the word so, you know, that cause and effect, so she got very wet. We assume this would be automatic for anyone who reads this because it's so automatic for us. But the research shows that beginning or struggling readers and our dual language learners, they need explicit instruction in this. And no other program really does this. It isn't easy to provide these types of examples. They need to be explicitly taught. And Amplify Reading really does just that. And you know, how do we do that? Again, we go back to those literacy research partners that we had and they pinpointed the skills where explicit systematic practice actually has an effect on students overall comprehension growth. You know, we know students need to work on both aspects of the reading rope. It's particularly important for beginning and struggling readers, again, just like our dual language learners. These are the things effective readers do automatically, yet so many kids need guidance and practice. And as you can see from our connections to the science of reading, we've identified six of these micro comprehension processes that improve comprehension abilities for our kids. And in that last example that we shared, the, the rain cloud example, you know, we showed how we can work on both connectives and gap filling inferences. And so that's the connection strand there. We did it by isolating that word so, as well as working on the inference from the text, you know, that it was raining. And again, Amplify Reading addresses all six of those that we've identified. So I wanna look at exa an example of how we work on the sentence level comprehension. So you see that sentence level comprehension there, the strand, and identifying pronouns and their antecedents or something we call anaphora. Uh, in that game, unmask that. So we're gonna look at that. You're seeing the game right here. We're not gonna go live for this. Megan's great at going live, but we're gonna not have to challenge her again for that. <laughs> but instead of drilling students with that main idea question that we talked about, Amplify Reading is gonna teach students those underlying 
micro comprehension skills that allow them to build those mental models that we just looked at. So in Unmask That, and that's the game you're seeing here, students are going to learn about anaphora, words that replace other words here. And so the most common example is the use by an author of a pronoun to replace an antecedent. And they do that for brevity, right? Because authors leave a lot out of a story. And so skilled readers do this naturally, but it turns out that it's really tough for many of our early readers, especially English language learners. And it's a skill that requires practice in order to master it. So you're seeing Wiley and he and Paul and he, and they identify who is the he. Um, if they don't identify it, there's going to be a scaffold that's going to help support them and guide them to that till they get it right and continue to do that. So to take this one step further, we then offer students the opportunity to transfer these skills. So that's what you're seeing right here from an actual or to an actual text um, from kindergarten through grade five. And again, this was our lifting up the sky, the Snohomish legend. And so we include practice with these comprehension micro skills, helping students to make those connections between the skills they practice in the game. So you're actually seeing that, you know, that little mask, they have to identify that. The people is the answer there. They identified that, they got it right, and we move on. I will also want you to notice there that we've got a little speaker. So, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute too, um, but they can actually have this read to them and the questions as well. And so just like in CKLA's grades three to five integrated strand, we're gonna empower kids with those skills to continue to unpack the complex text and transfer close reading skills through the e-reader. This is the grade four to five kind of world of adventure you're seeing here, but we're working on you know, higher level text in those close reading and text analysis skills. And as we really finish up looking at that comprehension aspect of Amplify Reading, we want to reiterate how important it is for, to, you know, all, we need to support all of our kids, especially as we may have remote, more remote learning, you know, that's thrust upon us. So we really want to make sure we're supporting kids. We do that through that intentional uh, focus on those micro comprehension processes first, but then we also have reveal words and we didn't share that with you, but words are underlined within those um, e-reader. Kids can click on them, a, an image comes up, a part of speech comes up and a definition comes up, you know, a kid friendly. And so those are provided for our students with um, some underlined vocabulary. And there's also audio support to aid kids with that comprehension of the grade level text. You have the option of using the Spanish narrative in K-3, to and many of the skill games also have audio instruction in Spanish as well. Amplify Reading is going to provide tremendous support for stakeholders, you know, throughout. I've hit upon a number of this. Now, Megan's going to talk to you uh, about a lot more. And I was on mute. I'm sorry. Okay. So well, actually look at reporting. You know, during this remote learning time, many teachers struggled at the end of the year with, with especially in earlier grades, how to gather assessment data from their students. And Amplify Reading does this in an effortless way for you. So as students are playing in Amplify Reading, they're providing you with ongoing assessment data to really inform your instruction and then also measure their growth. So Amplify Reading's teacher dashboard provides or gives you a look at the breakdown for individual students um, that include, you know, whether they've logged in in the last 24 hours, how many minutes they've used Amplify Reading in the past seven days. It'll also show you the number of subskills they've mastered and how they performed in developing um, specific skills. So those little black circles you see, those are actually trouble spot indicators. Um, and that's where students are stuck. Um, so that's where they're going to need help with those subskills. Instead of Amplify Reading actually kicking them out of the program, it's going to reassign, that adaptive algorithm is going to reassign them um, games that would help develop the prerequisite skills for those. And as the teacher, you're informed of this trouble spot um, and you're also provided some instructional activities, which we'll take a look at here in a second. But you don't just have insight into your uh, student's individual performance, you actually have a class summary tab where you can take an overall look at your students, your class usage as a whole. You can see how many subskill masteries, uh, subskills have been mastered for your entire class, um, as well as you'll see that overview of the trouble spots that each student has encountered. Um, with the teacher-led activities I mentioned. So looking at this, I can see how many students have been, um, you know, have been using Amplify Reading, how many sub-skills have been mastered. I can 
also see their trouble spots by students. And I can see that granular data there. It's giving me suggestions for, um, you know, uh, sub-skill practice that I can really um, uh, help develop or target my instruction to remediate these skills that I see here. Um, but it doesn't just stop there. On the right, you see the actual instructional activities to use uh, with students individually um, to really close those skill gaps. And so that te those teacher-led instructional resources are actually housed in our resource library. Um, not only do they mention which, one, which activities to use uh, for each student, but you also have access Access to the entire library um, to be able to use however you you choose or you see fit. Amplify Reading also empowers building and district leaders with on-demand reports uh, for administrators and so the administrator reports provide real-time actionable information on usage, school activity, and growth that will enable leaders to act as proactive partners in ensuring that teachers and students use the program and actually are benefiting from its use. But, you know, for most schools in the U.S., back to school this fall will not look like last year. I'm sure you and your leadership have already uh, started conversations about necessary modifications to the schedule, to the content and instructional routines. But Amplify is committed to being your partner um, along the way. So we've actually developed a variety of resources to ensure you have the tools you need to support students in developing foundational skills and background knowledge, no matter where that learning is happening. So we're gonna provide you guys guidance on how you would use or implement Amplify CKLA and Amplify Reading for extended periods of time of remote learning. Um, in both situations where students actually have access to technology and those where technology is limited. Uh, limited, as well as, you know, in a hybrid learning environment where students are alternating days between the classroom and at home. So we're going to provide those suggested daily schedules to help um, you establish how to implement both core instruction with CKLA, um, practice uh, opportunities um, that are personalized with Amplify Reading, um, so you can develop your plan for back to school, uh, whether that be remote or hybrid learning. And obviously in a traditional classroom setting, um, you know, that would look very familiar to you guys. But in, and Karen, you know, I would love for you to share how um, we've really committed to not just supporting teachers, but also our entire learning communities of schools. Well, thanks, Megan. And you shared a lot about the reporting and all the things that teachers are really concerned about. And so we do have more to share about a parent portal. And, you know, we've got introduction videos to help parents get that information. And, and those have come in really handy as we um, have been in this remote learning environment. Uh, it also frees the teacher up to focus on instruction, you know, as has the, um, depending on the, the environment that we'll be in. Uh, but there's easy downloadable login PDFs, and those are in English and Spanish, support resources and videos in Sp and English and Spanish, I can't talk. Um, and again, there's training and support anytime, anywhere. So we've got all of that available to teachers as well. And in addition to those live webinars, teachers can also access self-paced training resources uh, from within the ac their accounts and ensure that students can get started in any environment. And we are, you know, Megan has not hit upon we have we have so much in development as for ckla as well as amplify reading and those connections and trying to support people in um a a, a back to school uh, foundational skills booster that there's just so much out there in terms of support right now um but again scratching the surface we'll, we'll come back to that another day and uh, i know that we've also got some additional uh sessions that are coming up and uh, you can sign up for those. A lot of them focus heavily on Amplify Reading, what makes it different, what's in store here. Uh, but please don't hesitate to sign up for those. Get in touch with us. Uh, Steve has given us the um, link to request more information. We're happy to get on another call. We do a lot of webinars with, with schools and, and, and Zoom calls and phone calls just to give people more information. If you want to join our Science of Reading podcast, we'd love that too. Some of you are, I'm sure, already subscribing. Susan and the amazing guests we have are just, it's tremendous. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. So some of you may be uh, members of that already as well. 
So if you aren't a member of our Science of Reading Facebook page or subscribing to our podcast, please go ahead and do both of those things. We'd love to hear. And it's not all about Amplify Reading or CKLA. It's about all of the resources and things. People are sharing tons of great things on the Facebook page uh, with the, related to the science of reading. And so now we want to make sure that we get to your um, questions. I know I've tried. I tried. I was afraid to start answering some questions that were in the chat because I knew that um, I wanted to share some things on some of these slides. And so um, my turn was coming up. Uh, but please ask away. And Steve, maybe you can too share some things here. Yeah, we've had we've had some good questions come in and definitely encourage people to continue to put them into that Q&A box at the, the bottom toolbar for you. Um, let's start with just looking at these questions here. Um, can Amplify Reading, Karen or Megan, can Amplify Reading be used for summer school? Yes. Absolutely. In fact, we've had worked with a lot, of, both Karen and I have worked with a lot of districts and um, uh, schools who have actually impl implemented Amplify Reading for as, as really their personal lot or their differentiated piece uh, for, for summer school, um, especially during this remote learning time. And so we've had a lot of uh, call, uh, uh, calls and we provided a lot of support with that. Um, especially when we think about who, uh, you know, or what, what students target school, uh, summer school is really targeting. And so Amplify Reading providing that age appropriate narrative um, with the uh, skills that are specific to students' needs um, is really something that makes uh, that summer school instruction very, very easy. Steve, I'm gonna jump in because I see a couple questions too, if you don't mind. Um, April, uh, sure. with the broadband speed, we would need to send you the tech specifications for that, unless Steve knows that or Megan knows that. Um, but we have not heard, I have never heard that kids are having trouble um, getting in and staying in the program. Have you, Megan? Yeah, I've, I haven't heard any of that. I know um, if it works with, uh, I mean, I, I haven't had any, any yeah. Uh, issues. I haven't either, but we will, we'll, we'll be happy to send you, um, yeah, the... Yeah, I, I, I can speak to the fact that I know Amplify Reading was developed um, primarily to be flexible in remote learning scenarios long before coronavirus had, had struck us. Um, so there's a number of devices that can be used across. Um, again, April, though, I will, I will look to uh, for a more formal answer, and we can definitely send that along. And so that goes to Greta's question too about the materials and what's coming digitally as well as what's online. Again, we, we just scratched the surface about CKLA digital teaching um, and ideas that are out there, things that are in development. We've got those, the, the read alouds and the images as, as videos. All of this is in, is going to be on our site or already, and you may have already used the free resources. If you've gone to our free resource site, you may see some of the um, we've kind of given teasers of some of that um, to, we really tried to meet teachers' needs based on all the feedback we've been hearing. Uh, but, but so you get, all, you, you get the digital hub when you're working with CKLA and you amplify readings. Um, again, it's a, a different platform, but you can access it through that hub. So it's a little bit more complicated than what, do, what materials you have and what, you get everything that you're, you're seeking, we'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, but, but that's something you work with your account executive. And again, Steve, we've given you that little link to um, get more information, get more detailed information about specifically what you're looking for. Yeah, great. And you know what? There was a question that uh, from Regina who, she asked how many digital games there are there for older grades. And Stephen did answer Regina, but I just wanna kind of reiterate like, um, you know, for, for students in older grades, especially in three, five, you know, we Amplify Reading does have over 50 games in the program, each with uh, many levels. Sometimes you'll see 18, 19 levels. So lots of different games and levels there that are gonna increase in complexity. But the three, five quest and something we really didn't, especially in four, five, something we really didn't jump into is how those quests are structured. Um, so something that was really important was, hey, look, we want to give students the uh, skills and comprehension practice that is just right for them. But we also want to do that alongside 
um, you know, grade level text. So the fourth and fifth grade quests actually have those uh, quests built in with the, the skills games practice, but there's also chapter books that are built into that um, program as well as uh, close reading quest where students join the four eyes and, and work through different um, problems that they encounter. And so that's just in three, five, but all of the, the games prior to that, prior to grades three through five, students could even be assigned some of those games as well. So lots of opportunities for practice. And Megan, your answer kind of hits on what Christy was asking about, about the titles for the e-reader. So these were developed based on Amplify Reading and the vocabulary, the domain vocabulary and the domain topics. And so you're not going to see those trade book titles that you may be accustomed to. When we, we do have trade books on CKLA, in CKLA, and so if you go to that website, the teacher resource site, you can see the aligned trade books that go with that. And we also have lists for teachers to, that, to extend that learning as well. Um, but those titles, those e-readers that we were showing you some pictures of are really specific to Amplify Reading. And then somebody else also asked about the scope and sequence correlating with state standards. So this the CKLA scope and sequence and that um, connected aligned sequence with Amplify Reading, though you're going to see that related to the um, college and career readiness standards. And again, when you look at every lesson within CKLA, you're going to see those um, objectives daily that are aligned to those standards. And again, we'd be happy to share more about that. Um, like I said, I keep saying we just scratched the surface. There's so much to share. Yeah, yeah. So if you are interested in that Common Core sequence uh, uh, alignment to Common Core standards, we do have that for Amplify Reading. And I don't know if there are other questions we've missed in the chat or in the, I think we've a answered everything. Steve, I know you've been keeping up. I think, I think you guys have hit them all. Yes. Are there other questions that people have? You want to put it in the chat or in the Q&A, either one? Thank you all for such great questions. Uh, thank you all for your attention. I think we cut it right under the, <laughs> the time, gave you a couple minutes back of your time. We know how valuable that is to you. And we really appreciate your attendance today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for joining. And um, should you have any questions, uh, you know, Stephen did put it in that follow-up link. Or if you want to request any of the resources that were mentioned, please feel free to reach out and do so.